At 3,711 feet above sea level, and with gradual approaches on either side, Yellowhead Pass has proven to be the ideal crossing of Canada's Rocky Mountains. Canadian National utilizes this strategic crossing of the Continental Divide, marking the provincial boundary of British Columbia and Alberta. The railway is busy, with intermodal traffic heading to and from west coast ports of Vancouver and Prince Rupert, B.C. The rails stay polished with unit grain and coal trains heading for export. Numerous mixed merchandise trains. And Via Rail's passenger trains sporting sleek silver dome cars. We will cover this incredibly beautiful line from Hinton, Alberta to Red Pass, British Columbia. A good deal of the route traverses the spectacular setting of Jasper National Park. Seven Idea Productions made two special trips to the Yellowhead country, and our cameras captured its natural beauty in both summer and winter. Join us for a spectacular rail fan adventure you won't soon forget. Canada's Yellowhead Pass. Yellowhead Pass is located in the Canadian Rockies at the Continental Divide. This invisible line forges the provincial boundary between Alberta and British Columbia. Its easy climb of less than half a percent on either side is ideal for the long, heavy trains often run by CN on their trans-Canadian route. We will be traveling east to west beginning at Hinton, milepost 184.6 on the Edson subdivision. The railway follows the Athabasca River through Entrance, Solomon, and Swan Landing, the location of a siding and small yard along the shore of Brule Lake. This is also a junction with the Grand Cache subdivision. The grade continues west through Park Gate and is double-tracked as far as Devona, where it skirts the northern edge of Jasper Lake. The beautiful scenery of Jasper National Park continues to unfold as we head through Henry House, where double track resumes. The line continues compass south through English, arriving at the crew change point at Jasper, milepost 235.7. West of here, trains travel over the Albreda sub through Home, Wind, and Geeky, reaching the Continental Divide at Yellowhead, milepost 17.6. The railway continues down the west side on an easy grade past Yellowhead Lake to Fitzwilliam, entering a single track section for 6.7 miles. At Grant Brook, the line is again double tracked and trains race along Moose Lake, reaching our destination along the Fraser River at Red Pass. The fleeting glow of a January sunrise is reflected in the sheer cliffs of western Alberta's Rocky Mountains. We are standing alongside of Canadian National's Edson subdivision at a town called Hinton. Situated 185 rail miles west of Edmonton, Alberta, Hinton is the last town one encounters before entering Jasper National Park. A very short manifest has just spotted cars for a nearby mill 
and slowly heads toward the west end of the 12,300-foot siding. The crew is patiently waiting for the arrival of a high-priority stack train before continuing west to Swan Landing, where it will continue switching. Hearing a nearby defect detector on the radio, we know we don't have long to wait. Officially milepost 184.6 on the timetable, Hinton is a passenger stop for Via Rails Canadian on its 2,800-mile route between Toronto and Vancouver. Looking east on this blustery winter morning, the high green is both a welcome and expected signal aspect for the approaching CN2261 East. The lone GE ES44DC leads train 112 away from the Rocky Mountains and through the forested foothill country west of Edmonton. CN8891, a robot EMD SD70M-2, adds its horsepower to the rear of the train as it rolls over the east switch of Hinton. Note the red marker light over the engineer's side windshield. Canadian National uses this method to identify the rear of a train when a radio-controlled locomotive is present. It is somewhat unique, as many railroads in North America use a dimmed headlight instead. West of Hinton, the Edson subdivision passes through Entrance, an unincorporated community considered the gateway to Jasper National Park. CN 3037 East is in charge of train Extra 110. It has just passed the 6,594-foot siding at Entrance and approaches the Prairie Creek Bridge near milepost 188.3.
Prairie Creek Bridge was built by the Grand Trunk Pacific, whose rail line extended from Edmonton through Jasper National Park and into Yellowhead Pass by 1911. The competing Canadian Northern built a similar line, but there was not enough rail traffic to support two railways. Both went bankrupt shortly after completion. Eventually, they were nationalized by the Canadian government and restructured as the Canadian National. The Prairie Creek Bridge was renovated in 1927 and is used to this day. It spans 802 feet over Mascoteo Creek and is 98 feet high. The 12,000-foot-long Extra 110 met a westbound 811 grain train at Hinton. Within a few minutes, it crosses the Prairie Creek Bridge behind CN 3015. Mid-train, a leased city rail ES44AC lettered CREX 1306 had some muscle in front of a string of tank cars. Between Entrance and Solomon, the CN crosses the frozen Athabasca River on a deck girder bridge. The short manifest we first caught at Hinton is seen again on its way to Swan Landing. The Athabasca River provides a course for the railway through the eastern portion of Jasper National Park. Originating near Jasper, the 765-mile waterway becomes part of the Peace, Slave, and Mackenzie Rivers, eventually finding its way to the Arctic Ocean. Over the past several days, Arctic temperatures have gripped the land, turning the surface of the water to ice. Now, a strong Chinook wind has started to blow as it often does in these parts.
Chinooks have been known to reach hurricane force, toppling trains. After waiting a couple of hours downstream from the bridge, the whine of AC traction motors sifts through the forested backcountry, announcing another westbound. CN 2953 is in charge of train 309, a 173 car manifest running between Edmonton and Vancouver. Long strings of tank cars are common on trains originating in Alberta, being Canada's largest oil producing province. Edmonton is one of the two largest producers of petrochemicals in North America. The other is Red Deer, located between Edmonton and Calgary. To the east, the Athabasca oil sands near Fort McMurray are said to equal the total conventional oil reserves found in the rest of the world. A radio-controlled GE works mid-train. It's 8.10 the next morning. The lights of a westbound are seen through the trees skirting the north side of the Athabasca River, near Swan Landing. The sound of the train is partially drowned out by the steady Chinook. Thirteen minutes later, a warm headlight of eastbound train 112 cuts through the pre-dawn dark. The Vancouver to Montreal stacker silently skirts the icy edge of Brule Lake. At 10 minutes to 9, it is light enough to get our first glimpse of Jasper National Park and Brule Lake. The southeastern sky promises a January sunrise, and it casts its cool light over the jagged peaks of the Brule Range. Dawn is reluctant to arrive in the Yellowhead Country, and we take time to enjoy the beauty it reveals. This was a scene explorer David Thompson was quite familiar with, as he and a party of 12 men camped in the valley below us for 24 days in December of 1810. Employed by the Northwest Company, Thompson established a trade route through these mountains. Along the northwest shore of Brule Lake, Swan Landing is a 14,950-foot siding and junction with Canadian Nationals Grand Cash Sub. Trains often stop to switch cars in a small yard here, which can be busy at all hours of the day. Eastbound train 112 rolls through Swan Landing on its journey between Vancouver and Montreal on this blustery January morning.
The 232.9-mile Grand Cache subdivision was built between 1966 and 1969 by the Alberta Resources Railway Corporation, created by the government of Alberta. Its purpose was to tap the vast resources east of the Rocky Mountains between Hinton and Grand Prairie. Canadian National now owns and operates the rail line. The crew of the CN2195 are using this portion of the Grand Cache sub to perform switching duties in the yard at Swan Landing. The train passes the Brewer Road crossing at milepost 2.1 on the subdivision. We didn't have much time to get this shot and were forced to settle for our backup camera and its onboard microphone. Its small windscreen didn't stand a chance in the face of the mighty Chinook. Departing Swan Landing, the Edson sub continues west through Park Gate at milepost 206, officially entering Jasper National Park. Established in 1907 as Jasper Forest Park, it achieved national park status in 1930. Covering 4,200 square miles, Jasper is the largest national park in the Canadian Rockies. Surrounded by numerous mountains, Jasper Lake is one of the park's many features, easily viewed from the Yellowhead Highway. This is actually a stretch of the Athabasca River, which broadens out to a shallow lake about six miles in length and up to three miles across. On a cool summer morning, westbound train 111 glides along the far bank on its run between Toronto and Vancouver. The sound of the train carries easily in the gentle air.
The train continues toward Henry House and then Jasper, while calm water reflects the light clouds over the mountains to the west. By the afternoon, these light clouds will shake the mountains with thunder, and the glassy water will churn in the turbulent breeze. In the meantime, tourists along the Yellowhead Highway enjoy the pleasant summertime scene. In the fall, the water level drops, exposing sand and silt to the strong westerly winds of the Athabasca Valley. Winter snow drifts across the wide plain while an eastbound heads for Swan Landing in the gathering dusk. During our summertime visit to the park, we ventured into the high country along the southwest shore of Jasper Lake. The park is richly lit by the afternoon sun and shadows, while the breeze carries with it the echo of mountain thunder. Away from the busy Yellowhead Highway and throng of tourists, we find we have this magnificent country all to ourselves. Thunderheads spend their energy in the rugged mountains as summertime thunderstorms blow up from the Continental Divide to Edmonton. Through the ambient breeze above the Athabasca Valley, the drumming of hard-working diesels signal eastbound train 302 as it approaches Windy Point and Jasper Lake. The 302 slips through the shadow of a thundercloud as it heads east between Vancouver and Toronto. The cloud moves on in time for the CN2326 West. A pleasant surprise is the former BC Rail GE number 4644. The 21-year-old unit is still working hard and looking good doing it.
Jasper National Park was established on September 14, 1907 as Jasper Forest Park. It was given national park status in 1930 and sees over 2 million visitors annually. It was first surveyed as a possible railway and wagon road through Yellowhead Pass in 1865. Canadian Pacific Railway considered it for its transcontinental line, but chose a southern more difficult route over Kicking Horse and Rogers Passes instead. It was Grand Trunk Pacific and Canadian Northern that saw this route as an opportunity for a second transcontinental railway to compete with the CPR. When the rich greens of summer are replaced with winter's gray, Jasper retains a beauty all its own. The Athabasca River continues its northeastern march away from the Continental Divide, while the Edson Sub is hidden in the Douglas Fir and Lodgepole Pine that decorate the valley. As we make our way toward Henry House, east of Jasper, we find a herd of mountain sheep resting and grazing in a clearing. These winter feeding grounds are covered with light snow. The sheep paw the frozen ground for food. CN 2254 West crosses the Snaring River at Henry House. Just west of the bridge, another westbound manifest heads for Jasper on a cloudy August morning. A lone GE ES44AC number 2960 is on the point. This is the same location in winter. Three bull elk paw the snowy ground for food just south of the main line at Henry House. A National Historic Site in Canada, 
Henry House was an important staging site for David Thompson's exploration of Athabasca Pass west of here. It was built in 1811 by William Henry and closed in the 1830s. It is milepost 225.8 on Canadian National's Edson Sub. Henry House marks the beginning of Double Track, which continues to the division point at Jasper. A signal bridge stands guard near milepost 228.5, and the tail of an eastbound is seen on the south track, waiting for CN train 811 to clear before continuing east to Edson. Mule deer forage for food along the tracks, and if you look closely, so does a wily coyote. As the westbound approaches, it appears the crew may get some fresh venison. However, the deer managed to get clear of the train in the nick of time. We last caught this train crossing the Prairie Creek Bridge near Hinton. CREX 1306 lends a hand mid-train. It's nearly 4 p.m., and the cool winter light begins to fade in the approaching dusk. As the temperature plunges below freezing, the drumming of big diesels fills the air. CN Train 191 races east toward Henry House.
We continue our westward journey toward the community of Jasper, following the milky waters of the Athabasca River, which begins as a glacier in the park. A familiar landmark is Mount Edith Cavell, whose 11,033-foot peak is the most prominent in Alberta. Due to its latitude, Jasper receives over 16 hours of daylight during the summer months. Our August visit found the weather to be fairly mild, with daytime temperatures reaching in the low 70s. Thunderstorms formed in the mountains nearly every afternoon, sustaining the many wildflowers found throughout the park. An eastbound stack train has just completed a crew change at Jasper and glides down grade on the south track. The train disappears from view as it continues down grade between Jasper and English at milepost 233. Another westbound is approaching, so we stay right where we are and take in the surroundings on this nearly picture-perfect summer afternoon. The sound of a hard-working GE brings our attention back to the rails as CN 2960 West lugs a manifest toward Jasper on the south track.
A remote-controlled GE ES44AC number 2842 has worked mid-train on its westward journey and will be set out at Jasper. It is currently offline and being drug into the yard. To aid the train, a pair of man helpers have been added to the rear at English. The helpers consist of CN3073, a new Tier 4 ES44AC, and CN8001, an EMD SD70M-2. They assist the train into the yard and will help with switching duties upon arrival. Established in 1813 by the Northwest Trading Company as Jasper House, this was a fur trade outpost on a trade route to New Caledonia, now part of present-day British Columbia. In 1911, the Grand Trunk Pacific built a siding here named Fitzhugh, and Canadian Northern arrived the following year. Today, Jasper serves as a division and crew change point for the Canadian National, with the Edson sub heading east to Edmonton, and the Albreda sub traveling west over the Continental Divide. A string of sulfur cars sit in the yard while light power off an eastbound shuffle past. On the near track, Via Rail's Jasper to Prince Rupert train is tied down, waiting its next trip west. It operates three days a week with an overnight stop at Prince George. Jasper is also a stop for Via Rail's premier passenger train, the Canadian, on its 2,800-mile run between Toronto and Vancouver. The Rocky Mountain Air also calls on Jasper on one of its many scenic routes through western Canada. This utility trailer proudly proclaims Jasper's significance in the universe. A commercial hub within the park, Jasper sees visitors traveling the Yellowhead Highway as well as the Columbia Icefields Parkway north from Banff and Lake Louise. The Jasper Railway Station is located on Connaught Drive, which parallels the yard. It was built in 1926. Only slightly older than the station, CN482 Steam Locomotive number 6015 sits on public display as it has since 1972. It adds to the charm of this little community in the Athabasca Valley, surrounded by the spectacular Canadian Rockies. Westbound CN 2953 brings train 309 to a stop for a crew change. This train originated in Edmonton and is bound for Coquitlam, BC, which is part of the greater Vancouver area. Jasper is milepost 235.7 on the Edson subdivision. Besides the yard, CN also has a maintenance of way base at this strategic location just east of the Continental Divide. With a fresh crew on board, the 309 resumes its westward journey, entering the Albreda 
and part of the Robson subdivision for a 132-mile trip to Blue River. From there, it will travel the Clearwater subdivision to Kamloops, the Ashcroft sub to Boston Bar, and finally, the Yale sub to Vancouver. This route will take the train through the scenic Thompson and Fraser River canyons, which we have covered in other programs. Leaving Jasper, westbounds dig in for a 17-mile climb out of the Athabasca Valley along the Mayette River toward the Continental Divide. Westbound train 101 heads up grade between Wind and Geeky.
The Alberta subdivision sees double track running between Jasper and Fitzwilliam, a distance of around 25 miles. A set of crossovers can be found at Geeky, milepost 8.5. Train 191 heads west toward the Continental Divide on the south track. Moments after the 191 disappears from view, eastbound train 348 appears on the north track. This manifest runs between Prince George and Edmonton and contains a good number of lumber loads. Trains cross the Continental Divide at Yellowhead, milepost 17.6 on the Elbrita sub. CN 8851 brings train 302 to a stop at the summit to retrieve its conductor. The train suffered a pull apart two miles west of here, one of the hazards of mountain railroading. The conductor was driven to a grade crossing right behind us to get back on the lead engine after the broken knuckle was replaced and the train put back together.
This train has an interesting assortment of motive power. Behind the lead SD70M-2 is a former LMS GE C40-8W number 2460. Behind that, an ex-Chicago and Northwestern C40-8 painted with CN's 15 years logo. The 2124 is one of six C40-8s acquired from the UP that were given this unique logo commemorating the 15th anniversary of Canadian Nationals privatization, which occurred in 1995. The fourth unit is a former Illinois Central SD70. The high rail truck backs away from the crossing after dropping off the conductor, and we reposition ourselves just beyond the signals to watch the 302 get underway. This train originated in Vancouver and is bound for Toronto. Several loads of large diameter pipe made by Wellspun in India are on the head end. This type of pipe is often used for natural gas pipelines. The rear of the train crests the summit of Yellowhead Pass and begins the downhill run to Jasper. Returning to Yellowhead in winter, the white trunks of trembling aspen poke out of a blanket of snow that covers the ground. Light is already beginning to fade on this brief January day as CN 2953 leads train 309 over the summit of the Canadian Rockies crossing from Alberta into British Columbia.
The train picks up speed as it heads down the west side. On a sunny afternoon, eastbound train 102 sprints over Yellowhead Pass on its nearly 3,000 mile run between Roberts Bank and Toronto. CN3060, a Tier 4 General Electric ES44AC, shoves the remainder of the train over the Continental Divide and into the province of Alberta. Continuing west, the jagged peak of Yellowhead Mountain towers 8,163 feet above sea level and over 1,100 feet above the forested landscape. Part of the Victoria Cross Range, it lies within the boundary of Mount Robson Provincial Park. At its base, the cool waters of Yellowhead Lake ripple in the mountain breeze. In 1863, gold seekers named it Buffalo Dung Lake, a name that was short-lived. A westbound stack train races along the far side.
Through the magic of cinema, we return to the same point in the winter, being careful not to break through the ice and snow along the water's edge. The ripples are now stilled, and snow blankets the surrounding mountain peaks. The silence is broken by train 119 in nearly the same scene we recorded six months earlier. Clouds begin to cover the scene as the 119 continues its westward journey to Roberts Bank. Between Fitzwilliam and Grant Brook, the line is single-tracked for 6.7 miles. CN 2838 leads westbound train 101 toward Moose Lake.
With its red marker light shining, CN-2974 shoves on the tail end of the 101, which is bound for the Roberts Bank Export Terminal in Vancouver, BC. Snow-covered mountains above Red Pass rise to meet the clouds west of Rainbow Canyon. On the railway, we are just west of Grant Brook and back to double track. Via rail train number five, the westbound Jasper to Prince Rupert heads for Red Pass on the south track. It is nicknamed the Rupert Rocket. Via Rail's premier passenger train number one, the Canadian, ducks under the Yellowhead Highway, skirting the north shore of Moose Lake on a warm summer afternoon. The train runs between Toronto and Vancouver. The emerald waters of Moose Lake mark the western end of our tour of Yellowhead Pass. It is fed by the Fraser River and has a distinction of being the only lake on the water's course. It is just over a mile wide and seven miles long. During the winter months, the emerald green is replaced with white and the aspens that line its banks are bare. Eastbound train 834 takes grain empties between Vancouver and Edmonton. After climbing Red Pass, the 834 races along the shore of Moose Lake at the maximum track speed of 45 miles per hour. Our final destination of Red Pass is located at the west end of Moose Lake. Here, the double track splits into two separate main lines on different grades through the pass. The north track diverges onto the Robson subdivision, utilizing the former Grand Trunk Pacific grade, while the Albreda sub continues off the south track. 
Both lines come back together again at Charles. In the summer months, the park-like setting is enhanced with numerous wildflowers, which grow amongst the evergreens along the shore. Just south of the grade, we see the Fraser River exiting Moose Lake. Flowing 854 miles to the Strait of Georgia in Vancouver, the Fraser is the longest river in British Columbia and the 10th longest in Canada. Looking west along the north track, we see a medium to clear aspect on the triple target signals near milepost 43.7. The RTC has lined a westbound manifest through the crossovers to the south track for a trip over Red Pass on the Elbrita sub. Normally westbounds are routed over the Robson subdivision, which today is busy with maintenance of way. Later on, a second westbound stops short of the junction. This train will be using the Robson subdivision and has been told to wait a few minutes for the maintenance personnel to clear up. As we wait, via rails train number 6, the eastbound Rupert Rocket heads for Jasper on the south track. A single dome car brings up the rear of the short train, formerly known as the Skeena. It runs three days a week between Prince Rupert and Jasper. After waiting about 30 minutes, CN 8102 West gets a light and proceeds onto the Robson subdivision at Red Pass Junction.
The Robson subdivision gets its name from Mount Robson, located west of Red Pass. Part of the Rainbow Range, its 12,972-foot summit is the highest point in the Canadian Rockies. Often shrouded in clouds, its north face is heavily glaciated and has proven to be a real challenge for mountain climbers. Only 10% of attempted climbs are successful. Most are forced to turn back due to inclement weather. Back at the junction, westbound train 199 also gets a light for the Robson sub. This high-priority stack train originated in Chicago and is bound for CN's container yard at the seaport of Prince Rupert. Located 465 miles north of Vancouver, it is the closest North American port to Asia and accessed via former Grand Trunk Pacific Rails. We made one final visit to Red Pass in January 2017. Clear skies and cold temperatures greeted us as we await another westbound. Propane-fired switch heaters have been working almost continuously and we can see their heat waves in the Arctic air. CN 2293 leads train 191 through Red Pass as the winter sun chins itself on a high ridge to the south.
The abounding scenery of Yellowhead Pass and Jasper National Park truly is a Canadian treasure. 100 short years ago, the building of these rails made it a feasible destination for anyone who wanted to visit, while providing a second transcontinental route for the benefit of the country. Two things they continue to accomplish to this very day. We hope you've enjoyed this tour of Yellowhead Pass, Canadian National's Rocky Mountain Gateway. Until next time, thanks for watching.